The 2021 edition of the EU-Africa SME Summit was designed to explore more in-depth opportunities for investment and trade among small and medium-sized enterprises in the two continents. I'm Kenneth Ibomo and I'll take you through the key takeaways from this summit. From the National Gallery of the Modern and Contemporary Arts in Rome, the hybrid format deployed for the summit also allowed participation from Senegal and virtually with the aim of bringing African and European entrepreneurs together and encourage them to cooperate and co-invest as well as explore opportunities for joint ventures and build the right alliances. Paolo Magri, the Executive Vice President and Director at the Institute for International Policy Studies, opens the summit. For decades, Africa has been considered a challenging place. And Africa can still be a challenging place, but major transformations are taking place across the continent, economic, demographic, social, and political. Many of these transformations offer plenty of reasons and opportunities for engaging more rather than less with Africa and with its process of economic development. This is one of the reasons why Africa international standing has been on the rise over the past two decades. Where some see higher than average risk and challenges, others see high rewards and opportunities. And indeed, Africa economic growth has been rewarding many European small and medium enterprises that work with or in Africa. The growing presence of European business when acting responsibly and respectfully also holds great potential for cooperation with Africans, with African firms and with African public authorities. A partnership that can turn into an exceptional boost for Africa's development. Today and tomorrow we are here to discuss the potential of this win-win scenario convened in Rome and Dakar at the same time at the second edition of the European African SME Summit co-promoted by the Italian and German SMEs Association and the European Confederation of SMEs. The theme this year focuses on three main areas, the economy, sustainability and humanity, exploring how to build the roadmap to shared success uh, quite apt for a time where the world is reeling from the impact of the COVID-19 shock. And for Africa, the continent is making huge efforts to increase intra-African trade through the Africa continental free trade area. So how can governments and the private sector in the EU and Africa build the desired future in these times of uncertainty? Migration is an inherent future of our societies today, including, of course, uh, Africa. Many countries have been forced to look inwards in order to protect, as they say, their economies. Now, for the partnership between Africa and Europe, this um, evolving dynamic could affect how the, these two parts, these two regions of the world uh, relate and work together going forward. I have been traveling as commission during the last five years uh, all around Northern Africa, including the Sahel region. And I had an excellent cooperation with the leadership of these countries. But I noticed also the weaknesses of working together. Migration can be, is a development uh, issue in Africa, and we all know it. Poverty, lack of employment, opportunities, and food uh, insecurity, together with conflicts within the countries and between some of the countries in the region, caused also by political instability, are the leading push factors of migration. I share the view of the economist who says that uh, the 21st century will be the century 
of Africa. Why so? In the first place, because of demography. If you don't have a dynamic demography, you don't have a dynamic economic growth. Uh, but the problem of Africa and the demography is job creation. You have to create jobs, decent jobs, to have social inclusion and political stability. But who creates jobs? Not governments who are indebted, who are overblooded with, with the fake employment often. Not large companies. We know that large companies all over the, uh, uh, the place are shedding jobs, are not uh, adding jobs. New sources of jobs come from entrepreneurship, new firm creation, and the development of small business. One of the main problems of Africa is that uh, small, medium-sized enterprises are, by a large extent, informal. They are informal uh, often for a matter of uh, survival. The issue is to let them grow, let them grow. And the partnership between European and African SMEs is essential. It's essential. Why? Because entrepreneurship throughout the world is spread through one fundamental mechanism, imitation, imitation. You copy someone who is doing well with its own business. By 2050, half of the world's youth will be from Africa. Our youth is our biggest asset, but it's also a ticking time bomb if we do not do something about unemployment. We have to create jobs. The good news is that Africa also has the highest percentage of entrepreneurs among working age adults of any continent in the world. There's also another plus with our growing youth population and innovation. Africa is at the forefront of the digital economy. Due to lack of infrastructure, we had to find different solutions and we leapfrogged into mobile and digital world to find solutions for our many challenges in some countries. Our young entrepreneurs run their entire business on a mobile phone. However, our small enterprises still need support. Support from the private sector because it's whatever support we're getting from government is, is, is not sufficient. So we need, the private sector needs to step up and we need to support our small, medium enterprises. The COVID is a very good opportunity actually for uh, both Europeans and African businesses to relaunch the, um, the, the relationship on new grounds. Many speakers have um, spoken about the short-term sort of difficulties, particularly relating to the COVID. Uh, we need really to um, upgrade the possibility and also the distribution of um, the vaccines across the continent. And this requires a lot of solidarity, definitely from the Europeans, but also uh, some commitments from the uh, uh, African leaders. On, uh, on the longer term, uh, as I said earlier, we need really to, um, to look at what worked and what did not work. We um, know that there is the uh, African Continental Free Trade Agreement, which was signed in 2018, and a lot of businesses have um, welcomed it. 
But this is not again new because there have been also uh, free trade agreements in the region, particularly in, in sub, at sub-regional levels in Southern Africa, Western Africa, ICOAS, or COMESA in Eastern Africa. Now, what uh, uh, we need to do is really to bring all these uh, free trade area into one and make the uh, uh, path for business growth much easier. So I think there are opportunities, but there are also difficulties uh, which were mentioned earlier. COVID is one, but also there's a lot of, um, I would say, the spread of conflicts and terrorists in the Sahel and also now in the eastern part of Africa is something to reckon with. Human trafficking is also another problem. And um, last but not least, climate change. All these areas are in one way or, uh, or another priorities for both Europe and Africa. And I think there is a lot of opportunity actually for both EU and Africa to uh, come together and, as was said earlier, come up with positive, innovative solutions. And I would say I am um, very uh, positive on all these issues because I think that uh, sitting together and looking at uh, all these issues and trying to find and uh, distinguish what is positive and what worked and what did not work is a way forward for both the uh, EU and Africa's growth and development. Let's hear from one of the biggest German SME associations and European co-presidents on what they are proposing for the development of small businesses in Africa. We have the overview of about 960,000 companies and uh, we analyzed and found out that the pillars of a successful a political and economic agenda to support SMEs in Africa and to make them a strong backbone of the African economy as, for example, the SMEs in Europe. It requires a focus on supporting entrepreneurship, improve work-based professional training, and most important, probably facilitate access to innovative financing for small firms to increase cooperation among SMEs in Africa and the European SMEs. And I also believe we need to nurture a new generation of risk ready or risk taking creative and professional entrepreneurs in Africa. However, they must be supported starting from a good practical professional training, passing through learning how to lead others and how to perform with the best in a team. And finally, to improve results, possibly thanks to access to the right finance. And sometimes the right finance, which is not always a question of millions, it can be small scale, makes a big difference for somebody as an entrepreneur to start a business. And that's the king's way to success, how we see that African SMEs can develop similarly and successfully like the European SMEs. Talking about recovering from the pandemic and building partnerships for the future, let's get a practical example of how this is playing out. Naturally, new business relations being formed will bring increased interaction between both sides and successful partnerships are likely to encourage more. And Turkey over the last two decades has been very active on the African scene. And in this regard, with diplomatic missions and Turkish companies setting up shop in Africa, as Turkish Airlines, Turkey's flag carrier, we also have enlarged our presence in the continent in the set time frame and observe how opening new transportation routes between uh, countries help to boost business and trade and tourism ties. Um, we have uh, excellent connectivity options, both on Africa and Europe over our hub in Istanbul, positioned ourselves as a gateway uh, between East and West, as well as the North and South, providing access to 66 countries within a five hour flight zone. Uh, we are eager to play an even bigger role uh, in Africa's future by establishing new links of transportation between Africa and the world. We have also very successful air cargo subsidy, Turkish cargo, uh, that proved to be a critical element in the struggle against the pandemic. 
we saved lives by carrying so many vaccines and medical also equipments as well. I mean, Turkish cargo will assume an even more vital role in Africa's future as an enabler. As you can see, we are ready to facilitate trade and business ties between Africa and Europe and beyond. For Africa, how should the continent rethink its relations with traditional partners? When we look at the global value chain, we see that Africa is very dependent on this trade to major uh, partners. It, 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 it's beginning with Europe and now we're seeing some, uh, let's say, a, a, a change going to Asia, especially China. And this has also been exacerbated with with the COVID-19 and uh, giving also a, a move against uh, 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 globalization and also some protectionism. So I think we, we think really the, the agenda uh, for Africa is to also uh, build its own industry. And we call that, you know, structural transformation. We need some structural transformation in Africa because just uh, selling raw materials and import everything that uh, Africa consumes is not a, a very well thought strategy. So for us, really what we think is to accelerate the agenda of uh, a structural transformation. And now that we have uh, the African Free Trade Agreement, I think we really need to implement that as soon as possible. I think really, uh, you know, uh, speaking in one voice, is, it's, it's very important because it will give us a very strong bargaining power. Africa is not one country, you know, it's like 44 countries. And when you compare, you know, the number of Africans with a country like India, it's, you know, India is like 1.2 billion and that's the same with Africa, but we are so divided, you know, into four countries. So we really need to to, to have a common position. And I think, you know, the, the uh, African Union, it's a platform to, for, for doing that. And really with the free trade continental uh, agreement, I think it's a, a, a good start for, for, for uh, creating a position and have a, a strong bargaining power when there is negotiation for trade. Now, a significant part of the summit was the official launch of the African Intellectual Property SME Help Desk. Let's find out how this will help small businesses. We are launching a help desk, a very important help desk for SMEs, for intellectual property rights, for them to phone, to write, to be in touch with if they have issues, questions, problems with intellectual property rights. And I'm very happy to be part of this today. This is something that exists elsewhere in the world, the European Union, and I'm not alone here, I'm here together with the friends of the European Union Intellectual Property Office. We support this in China, in South Asia, in Latin America. There was nothing in Africa. And the demand comes from European businesses. It is the European businesses that have asked us, please, to set this up. And we know it's huge. We know there's a huge uh, amount of countries, so it's challenging. But there's also enormous opportunities, and that's what you've been discussing today. In 2020, the EU was Africa's largest trade partner, accounting for 28% of Africa's total export and imports. And this coincided with the close to 70% of goods exported from the EU to Africa being manufactured goods. Meanwhile, most African countries today enjoy duty-free and quota-free access to the EU market. And the IP SME Help Desk is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to fa facilitate the direct investment of EU SMEs in African countries. Even more so now that IP has become a cornerstone of uh, AFTA and the Africa-EU trade relations, which is great news, by the way. Supporting smaller businesses and companies that are so important drivers for the growth is very important for us and is one of the priorities of the EU industrial strategy. But what sort of feedback are we getting from small businesses in Africa? Winkate Mutini, the program manager at the Pan-African Chamber of Commerce and Industry, shares some insight on this. 
The feedback we got was mainly for those who managed to participate on the Africa European Entrepreneurs Platform, which was one of the tools that was being pushed from this EU Africa SME Summit, where we're actually putting action to allow the businesses themselves to have B2B. So we've had a couple of feedback of uh, some of the SMEs having interactions with other SMEs in Europe, um, having a couple of orders coming through. But there were our requests for us to at least enhance the capacity to be able to match up because as you understand our definition of an sme in africa is very different from an sme in europe where you have a micro in germany would be considered like an sme with around 10 employees and maybe 2 million euros turnover here a micro would be one person and even way less than that in terms of turnover and so we would have to create a, a manner to be able to match up the expectations from both sides in order to have a mutual benefit but when it comes to the promotion of investment, we understand that Africa right now, everybody's talking about Africa being the prime um, you know, location for investment, both in terms of the fact that we have the labor capacity, we have the natural resources. Africa is now having the Africa continental free trade area. So we're talking about a lot of advancements that will help the continent become integrated in terms of finance, in terms of movement of people, and also in terms of how we also um, uh, structure different sectors and getting the African products to a standard that meets to the international quality. So in terms of, in terms of uh, investment, what was found through a study that was done uh, in terms of promoting SME competitiveness um, was that most investors are looking at skills and capacity as the key things. Capacity in the sense that the SMEs will be able to fulfill the orders that they can get, especially from international partners. And the other part is that the skills meet um, in terms of international standards that the employees, if it's depending on the sector, how they manage uh, the different products, or it's in terms of services, how they also match up with the kind of skill sets that we get across the world. So we are looking at investment uh, coming in in this particular two segments so that that way we can have the SMEs get to a level that they can be able to engage on an international uh, global trade. And in terms of political priorities, what do African small businesses really want? The African SMEs want, um, um, as always, actually some um, policy stability. But then, you know, we um, in our continent have a problem of uh, um, changing policies without really involving the small and medium enterprises actually in the formulation or in the discussion that leads to policy formulation. But then there are the usual sort of lacuna, meaning uh, the usual uh, access to, to finance. Small and medium enterprises actually have very difficult time in getting access to finance. Uh, why? Because um, the um, uh, banks are, are not really very well geared, actually, to serving these uh, in these types of enterprises. There is also the problem of, um, um, in many places, problem of corruption, which makes it very difficult for small and medium enterprises to thrive. You've also uh, problems with um, uh, regard to um, uh, movement of people from one country to another. So changes in these areas, we hope, will be uh, gradual, but definitely these are the changes that everybody, every small and medium enterprises expect that would happen in the coming uh, years. The AFCFTA, in my opinion, is, is not really uh, an instrument that would bring satisfaction to all the problems that small and medium enterprises face, but it is actually an instrument that would gradually uh, bring the changes that we, uh, uh, association like ours and also our members seek. The Managing Director of the European Entrepreneurs CEA PME, Stefan Moritz, moderated a session focused on how work-based professional training can make SMEs more competitive and resilient. We are starting or we are trying to spell out the cornerstones of an SME agenda. We are looking forward to February 2022 when the European Union and the African Union will meet together and discuss not only in a business forum on how we can support together and improve our cooperation, but also uh, the day after the political summit of all 81 states of the European Union and the African Union will meet and discuss how they can improve politically. We think that 
a good cooperation and a resilient competitive development of uh, the economy relies very much on SMEs. And the SMEs need a special agenda. And the special agenda is entrepreneurship, to strengthen the, uh, this, the, the training, but also the um, role of entrepreneurs in the society, uh, professional training, especially work-based learning, and also, of course, financial um, opportunities that are necessary, exactly tailor-made for small, medium-sized enterprises. And finally, the cooperation, which we are trying to support as Confederation European Entrepreneurs, CAPME, together with our partners, also with INSME, BVMW, CONFAPI, and uh, PACCI. It's not just uh, enough to train the entrepreneur. It's also really important to bring the workforce with the entrepreneur. Um, the, the improvement of, a, of an organization does not happen because somebody from the top uh, orders or bullies around uh, the workers. It comes because the workers understand what needs to be done. They have the tools and they have the ability to really be part of a growth journey. You know, when it comes to practice and we're trying to help firms improve it, one of the big frustrations is how so many well-intended ideas really don't work out as well as we would like. And so I think, you know, that is one of the big challenges. There's no shortage of companies coming out there offering to help firms improve. There's no shortage of sort of training facilities out there. And it's often really hard to tell, you know, who's good and who's bad, or is this going to work for my, my firm? And so uh, I'd like to give a couple of concrete examples from some of the work we've done. So, you know, one example was in Nigeria where we uh, were working, there was a government program that was going to try and train entrepreneurs in marketing and accounting skills. And we said, you know, is, you know, one of the key challenges is that owners really, entrepreneurs really have a lot of other things that they're trying to do at the same time. So maybe they would be better going to the market and trying to hire those skills. And so this is one of the questions is, and we found that, you know, working on that whole market for professional business services with HR providers, marketing and accounting firms, it was actually much more efficient in those cases for you to go to the market and, and uh, hire those skills than to try and learn them as an entrepreneur. So I think, you know, we need to think about which types of skills we, we should actually go to the market for versus train our existing workforce. There's a lot of progress being made in getting to understand how to make small businesses rise to their full potential. And as the partnership between Europe and Africa gets more in-depth, We'll be watching closely to see more big wins for small businesses. I'm Kenneth Ibomo. Thank you for watching.